affordable daycare has been part of the discourse for decades now. Ontario was the last province to sign on to the federal government's $10 a day daycare program. Will that put more money back into the pockets of parents? And how will that impact those that provide the care? I spoke to a private daycare provider to find out. The federal government has come up with uh, the $10 a day yeah. for daycare. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think the premise is fantastic. I love it. Um, I, I think that the execution so far in Ontario is um, not very well thought out in the sense that it is excluding unlicensed providers uh, who make up the majority of, of childcare options in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that if they were to include everybody, in the subsidies, it would be a great option. How does that impact your business? It, it, it kind of doesn't. Because unlicensed childcare makes up the majority of the options in Ontario, mm -hmm. people are still sort of going to be forced to attend those daycares. There will sort of continually be a need for me to operate because there's simply not enough spaces in licensed centres who are eligible for the subsidy and who opt in. By excluding people like me from these subsidy programs, you are still ultimately forcing people to pay out of pocket whatever cost someone in my position is charging. I've always tried to be as affordable as possible. I, I charge a significantly lower rate than what the going rate for Toronto is because of this neighborhood. This is a working class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people here, they often struggle to find the, you know, the, the resources to pay the, the sky high rates of care. What would you like to see other political groups do? I would like to see any one of our, our main party leaders acknowledge uh, the unlicensed providers. I would like to see the government overhaul the licensing system, which is currently uh, highly dysfunctional, very exploitive, and, you know, and simply doesn't address the needs of the people who are doing the work. You know, right now, in order for me to become licensed, I would have to sign on with a, a private company, basically. And they would, in exchange for the majority of my wages, issue me a license. Um, they pocket the difference, of course. I would still be expected to cover my own costs for food, my own costs for supplies, things of this uh, nature. So I would love to see the government take a look at that system, you know, and, uh, and say, hey, maybe it's not a great idea to allow a private company to employ me as an independent contractor and pay me less than minimum wage. My assumption was, and I think maybe the the narrative that's been put out there is that if you are a licensed daycare, yep. you're safer. Yes, as absolutely. As opposed to an unlicensed daycare. Yep, no, that is definitely sort of the general uh, feeling on it. It's, I, and I totally understand why that would be with most things. I think that's absolutely true. And it could even be true of daycare in the sense that, you know, obviously if you are unlicensed, there is much less oversight. There's not none, but it, there's a lot less. Mm -hmm. I, I understand why the majority of home providers don't want to be licensed. You know, for me, uh, this area is governed by one licensing agency. There's only one I could go with. And their, their going rate per child would be less than minimum wage for me. You can't expect people to want to be licensed when there's very little incentive. You know, there's very, very poor pay mm -hmm. and really no other major benefits other than sort of the privilege of saying, I, I have this license. Because right now the trade-off seems to be um, it, to get a license or to have a living wage. Yes, exactly. That is 100% it. And I simply, I simply will not do work that is 100 times the liability and 100 times the effort for the same pay that my kid brother makes, you know, at a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. and, and not that that's bad labor, that's necessary labor and it's great labor, but it's, you know, if you, if you, if you mess up a coffee, it, it's not really the same as if I screw up, you know, a kid. A child, yeah. <laughs> And I think this is something that uh, happens a lot. There's a solution for one thing, but then it seems to create another, another set problem. of problems. Yeah. And by ostracizing independent care providers and, and not including them in things like subsidies, you will only further exacerbate the shortages. The Coalition of Independent Care Providers estimates that close to 60 plus percent of childcare in Ontario is unlicensed home care. If you scare these care providers into closing down because they think they can't compete with the subsidized care, mm -hmm. uh, those spaces they're planning to add are just going to make up for spaces lost and we're going to be back at square one with shortages. There needs to be more infrastructure and you need to include the people who have been holding this system up in these subsidies. 
or you're going to have a big problem on your hands. It sounds as if they weren't at the table when these uh, policies were made. I think most certainly we were not. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw a poster some years ago and it said justice for women, $10 a day daycare now. And when I saw it, my first thought was, well, justice for, for those women, not justice for me, you know, because that could mean that I, I'm not able to feed my children, you know, and there needs to be there needs to be justice for the women in the workforce who need daycare, and there needs to be justice for the women who are doing the daycare. That chat was part of the thread with Nam Kiwanuka. For more content like this, hit the subscribe button and check out our other videos. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at TVO The Thread. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.